Kentucky Derby 146 will have no spectators in the stands for an already delayed race come the first week of September. Things on the, the ground obviously have been changing with regard to the COVID-19 crisis. You know, we really hoped that we would be able to have fans in the stands. Churchill Downs Racetrack President Kevin Flannery made the announcement on Friday. It comes just nine days after they decided a max capacity of 23,000 fans will be allowed in to watch the races. Flannery says this was a decision that was recently made given the number of COVID-19 cases in Louisville. With Louisville being uh, tabbed a red zone city by the CDC this week, we just felt that we could not responsibly bring in 23,000 fans to the facility for the derby. El sector taurino está en un momento delicado y de incertidumbre. Se van a anular por encima de los 500 festejos, más del 90%. Entre 6 y 10 mil toros, más o menos. Y este año, muy pocos. Antes de la pandemia se habrían matado como 100 o así. Somos el segundo espectáculo de masas de España después del fútbol. La temporada taurina va del 15 de marzo al 15 de octubre. Desde el 15 de octubre al 15 de marzo no tenemos ingresos, pero sí tenemos gastos. El estado de alarma ha empezado el 14 de marzo. Es decir, nos ha cogido justo en el peor momento. Hay compañeros que están llamando toros al matadero, con lo cual pierden, se calcula que el coste de producción de un toro son 5.000 euros y para carne te dan como mucho 500. Hay bastantes compañeros que es la única solución que ven. Los toreros están viviendo esto con gran preocupación. No pueden ejercer su profesión y, segundo, no tienen ingresos. ¿eh? Es como es así. Entonces, ellos lo están pasando también muy mal. Los criadores de toros, por supuesto que estamos amenazados de quiebra. Yo no conozco ninguna empresa que aguante mucho tiempo sin ingresos y con gastos. La solución es la normalización. Usually carriages can be spotted from Monument Circle, but the COVID-19 pandemic is slowing down business. These horses are grazing in a pasture instead of pulling a carriage full of tourists like they would usually be doing on a Sunday afternoon. Like a ghost town. The constant click of hooves on the cobblestone can't be heard downtown right now because the coronavirus advising people to avoid crowds is impacting the horse-drawn carriage business in a major way. Some of the other companies have full-time drivers which really depend on that income uh, for their entire livelihood. 50% of our business is uh, locals and 50% is usually people coming in for conventions or traveling through the city or tours. But since events are being canceled at every turn, Gene Henry says his country carriage company is suffering. Locals just aren't coming out the company has expenses and no one is lining up for carriage rides. Everybody's afraid to be around crowds so that they, even the people living here don't migrate to downtown. Henry says his company has been keeping carriages disinfected and ready for riders. At this point, he's even offering a discount if customers mention the virus. Working for you in downtown, Troy Washington, RTV6. It's peak holiday season, but this elephant sanctuary is quiet. Around 40 people a day should be visiting, but the reserve is closed. Thai authorities have temporarily shut down the camps to prevent the spread of coronavirus. Soon we're going to see all of the camps are going to start to struggle financially, trying to find food to feed the elephants and to pay their staff. While the animals here are retired and free to roam during the day, many of Thailand's 4,000 domesticated elephants bring in money through rides. The absence of visitors has led to concerns about welfare. The riding camps that were catering for the Chinese visitors, they actually closed early February. If the elephants aren't being ridden, they're then going to have to be, the, most of the places will be chaining their elephants 24 hours a day which is obviously, it's a bittersweet because the elephants are getting rest from riding, but then also they're not getting any exercise at all. It costs around 600 pounds a month to feed an elephant, and that's a huge amount of money when there's no income coming in. <coughs> while this sanctuary is hoping donations will keep them going while they're closed, others are already at crisis point. 
With potentially months without work ahead, the lives of a quarter of Thailand's domesticated elephants could be at risk. The tourism sector seemed like a safe investment for Kimbi Hlongwane when he set out to buy a new minibus early this year. His budding tour company had made impressive returns last year. Six months later, his 21-seater stands stationary, collecting dust in his parking lot. Africa's safari industry generates at least $12.4 billion annually, according to tour operator Safari Bookings. But as COVID-19 took hold across the world, bookings dropped 93%, leaving many struggling to survive. It's been tough, and the, the toughest thing is the staff, because we've had to let the staff go. Um, we paid them for the first month. We Second month, we paid a limited portion because TERS was, was kicking in. And, yeah, we just ride in it out now, but it, it's not an indefinite thing. We don't know how long, how long we can do this. We save some of uh, our money in the banks, but we, we now we just run out of money in the bank. So, oh, we'll start starving for now. Since this uh, pandemic of COVID-19, but the threat has gone high in terms of people wanting to do poaching. This is definitely the biggest threat that we've seen to the conservation world. We are already beginning to see uh, significant redundancies, job losses across the whole of the tourism and conservation sector uh, right across Africa. So the big concern for us really is that this may drive uh, an upsurge in poaching for uh, bushmeat and, and snaring, hunting, just to put food on the table. Beijing 俄罗斯因为疫情严重小小的身体不是跟着妈妈就是推着球到处跑来跑去模样十分的可爱 COVID-19 has taken its toll on animals here at South Korea's biggest indoor zoo. After seeing its revenue stagnant during the two-month shutdown due to the outbreak, the zoo in Daegu had to cut animals' food portions by nearly half. And that impact can be seen just by looking at these white lions whose bones are still visible through their skin. Usually we provide 14 chickens per lion, but during the shutdown only seven were given. Also, we used to feed them two times a day, but that changed to once a day. The number of zookeepers had also been reduced from nine to just three people. And the situation had become too much to be dealt with internally. Some of the executives used their own money to keep the business going, but that certainly isn't enough to solve the problem. Just when the zoo was about to reach breaking point, described by a zoo official as a matter of life and death for both workers and animals, food donations came in and the government restrictions were relaxed. The zoo finally reopened two weeks ago, but things are still eerily empty. Once visited by nearly 1,500 people a day, the zoo now receives less than 50 daily visitors. 
爸妈来动物园，小孩最期待看到胖嘟嘟、圆滚滚的大猫熊，一口接一口吃竹子的模样，让人看了好疗愈。加拿大亚伯塔省的卡尔加里动物园，这两只熊猫名为大毛和二顺，是园区里的大明星，深受游客喜爱。不过，他们也受到五费疫情波及。We have to relocate. The panda back home in China. 原来大毛和二顺没有竹子可以吃了。他们每天吃四十公斤的竹子，食量惊人。疫情还没爆发时，卡尔加里动物园每星期从中国空运两次新鲜竹子给猫熊吃。但武汉肺炎大爆发，冲击全球国际航班和运输业。让空运竹子困难重重，品质也大不如前。加上中国恐怕爆发第二波疫情，无法确保竹子的运量，园方决定让两只猫熊提前返乡，比原定的二零二三年提早三年。There's no set date on when the pandas are set to fly. 中国当局二零一四年把大毛跟二顺这两头猫熊租借给加拿大，租期是十年。他们经过人工受精，生下龙凤双胞胎加盼盼和加月月，是加拿。大成功孕育的第一对小猫熊，如今大毛和二顺也要返乡。卡尔加里动物园会让民众透过视讯在线上跟他们两个道别。谢荣新编译。我后来看到日本奈良可爱的鹿群总是吸引大批观光客到当地旅游，但是今年受到疫情的影响，游客锐减。过去呢总是被为了饱饱鹿饼的鹿群啊，现在少了零食，开始只能自食其力，吃野草恢复健康生活。但是有少部分的鹿可能出现所谓的鹿饼依赖。正受到皮包骨，我们连线记者林子礼。好的，主播各位观众，日本奈良一直是知名的旅游景点，奈良鹿更是人气明星，每年总是吸引大批游客到当地游玩。不过今年受到武汉肺炎疫情的影响，日媒报道，鹿群因为少了观光客喂食鹿饼，开始自力救济，靠着吃野草恢复健康的生活。但也有少部分的鹿疑似出现了鹿饼依赖症，就像人类只吃零食的偏食症状，结果瘦成皮包骨。有学者表示，以前的调查中曾发现有。一天吃两百枚鹿饼的奈良鹿，他们也许将人类的喂食视为理所当然，因此无法适应环境的变化。以上情形，再将时间镜头交还给棚内主播。一只、两只、三只，几只鳗鱼慢慢从沙子里探出头来，接着整群鳗鱼全都出现了。细长的身躯随着水波摇曳，远看就像是直立的植物一般，因此被叫做花园鳗。位于东京的墨田水族馆三月初因为疫情关闭，少了游客围绕。这里的三百只花园鳗越来越封闭，天天躲在沙子里，馆方也很难检查它们的健康。因此，水族馆突发奇想，从五月三日起举办为期三天的秀脸节，邀请民众与花园鳗视讯通话。馆方在水族箱外架起五台平板电脑，希望民众打视讯电话给花园鳗，秀出脸庞，向他们挥挥手，说说话，让花园鳗回忆起与人类互动的感觉。每通最长聊五分钟。由于花园鳗警觉性高，一有风吹草动就会钻回沙子里。馆方特别提醒民众不要突然大声说话，以免吓到他们。水族馆表示，活动让花园鳗开始降低警戒心，但后续效果仍有待观察。新冠病毒肆虐全世界，为了防堵疫情，许多国家已经开始实施全国封锁，人民被要求待在家中，关闭学校，取消社交聚会，禁止旅行。但对住在芝加哥雪德水族馆的跳岩企鹅，情况刚好相反。上星期日，这些企鹅走出他们住的玻璃馆，就如游客一样，在水族馆内自由散步。为了防堵新冠病毒疫情，水族馆暂时不对外开放，所以工作人员就把企鹅放出来，让他们探索水族馆。水族馆告诉芝加哥论坛报，馆内没有了游客，保育员发挥创意，让动物生活更多彩多姿，提供新的体验、活动、食物。让动物持续活动，鼓励他们去探索、解决问题及展现出自然行为。地球上的生物像动物多年来被关在笼子里，供人类观看。或许这次疫情在全世界燃烧，就是地球让生物获得喘息的方法。现在换成他们可以自由玩耍，而人类却要被关在家里喽。